I'm going to teach you how to convert between units using the factor label method. This can also be called dimensional analysis. This method works whenever you need to convert between units that agree on what zero is. So lengths or distances are like this. Zero centimeters equals zero inches equals zero light years. These are drastically different units, but they agree on zero. Masses are also like this. So zero kilograms equals zero pounds equals zero tons. They agree on zero, so this method works. Temperature scales are not like this. So zero degrees Celsius equals 32 degrees Fahrenheit equals 273.15 Kelvin. Zero is not the same for any of these temperature scales, so factor label method does not work. In cases like these, each and every unit conversion has its own dedicated equation. The factor label method starts with a conversion factor. So for example, one gram is equal to 1,000 milligrams. These are two quantities that are not equal to zero with different units that are the same as each other. And we can use this information to convert between units of grams and milligrams. First, let's think about what happens if you divide a number by itself. So for example, seven divided by seven, it's equal to one. Or 19 divided by 19, also equal to one. Whenever you have some value divided by itself, it's equal to one. In this conversion factor, we have two quantities that are the same as each other. The numbers are different, but the units are different too. So let's set up a fraction with one of these in the numerator, one in a denominator. So one gram divided by 1,000 milligrams. Numerically, if we were to solve for this, it would not be equal to one. But we have two quantities that are the same. So conceptually, we would be able to treat this as if it is equal to one. I could write a different fraction with these flipped and say the same thing about it. I could say 1,000 milligrams divided by one gram is conceptually equal to one. Again, not numerically equal to one, but these are representing the same quantity. So we can treat them as if they are equal to one. Now let's think about what happens if we multiply a value by one. Let's say, for example, 32 times one equals 32, or zero times one equals zero. The rule here is some number times one equals that original number. What this means is that we can multiply any value by either of these fractions that we came up with using our unit conversion factor and not actually change the value. This is how we're going to use the factor label method. So let's convert this value, 3,721 milligrams, into units of grams. What I need to do is multiply by one of these two fractions. So in this case, I'm going to multiply this by one gram divided by 1,000 milligrams. The answer that I end up getting is 3.721 grams. Let's look at just the units. I'm going to rewrite this, not with the numbers, just with the units. So milligrams times grams over milligrams. Now, whenever you have some unit divided by itself, they completely cancel each other out. So milligrams divided by milligrams, it's just like neither of them exist. Units I am left with would be just grams. If, however, I had chosen the other fraction, I would be able to tell that I chose the wrong fraction because my units would not make sense. So this fraction, I would have gotten an answer of 3,721,000, but my units would be milligrams squared divided by grams. Once again, let's rewrite this equation using only the units. I have milligrams, times milligrams over grams. So here, none of my units cancel out. These milligrams are both in the numerator. We can only cancel them out if it's one in the numerator, one in the denominator. So I end up with literally milligrams times milligrams over grams, which is milligrams squared over grams. So this is wrong. You can choose which fraction to use based on which one gives you the desirable units. So this is the correct 
factor label method. I cannot stress enough just how important it is to write the units after each and every one of these values in the equations that you set up. About 95% of the time when I see a student get an incorrect answer on a unit conversion problem, that student didn't bother writing their units. And what they have done is that they've taken away their own ability to double check their work using this quick and easy method. The way I double checked my work here is that I rewrote the equation using just the units. And in my incorrect equation, I established units didn't cancel out the way I wanted them to. I ended up with units that were nonsensical. If you don't write the units, you take away your own ability to double check your work quickly and easily, and it's much more likely that you're going to make a mistake and not catch it. Let's do some practice problems. This first one only requires one conversion factor. Other ones are going to be more complicated. So convert 40.5 centimeters to inches, given 2.54 centimeters equals 1.00 inch. So I need to start off by writing that original quantity that I'm given in the problem, 40.5 centimeters. I am going to need to multiply this by some fraction. And in this fraction, one of these values in my conversion factor is going to be the numerator, the other is going to be the denominator. I need to choose which is which based on what is going to make my units cancel out the way that I want them to. So if this is in centimeters, and I want centimeters to cancel out, I'm going to have to have centimeters in my denominator here. So I'm going to pick this 2.54 centimeters for the denominator and the 1.00 inches for the numerator. So this would give me an answer of 15.9 inches. I recommend always double checking your work by rewriting just the units in the equation to see if they cancel out the way you want them to. So centimeters times inch divided by centimeters. I have a centimeter in both the numerator and the denominator, so those cancel out. Units I am left with are just inches. So units did indeed cancel out the way that I wanted them to. Next problem. This is going to be a bit more complicated, and at the end I'm going to word the same problem in a different way so that you can see it worked out as a multi-step conversion problem. A box has dimensions of 110 centimeters by 420 centimeters by 23 centimeters. Find the volume in units of centimeters cubed and meters cubed. And our unit conversion factor is 100 centimeters equals 1 meter. Now the formula for volume of our box is length times width times height. I'm going to work that out really quickly. So my answer for the volume in centimeters cubed is 1,062,600 centimeters cubed. So one way in which I could convert this volume into units of meters cubed is I could take each of these original three values, convert them from centimeters to meters, then multiply them by each other. So let's convert 110 centimeters into units of meters. So I need to set up a fraction based on this unit conversion factor. I want centimeters to cancel out, so I'm going to put this 100 centimeters in the denominator and 1 meter in the numerator. So 110 centimeters times 1 meter divided by 100 centimeters, I get an answer of 1.1 meter. Let me do the same unit conversion for 420 centimeters and 23 centimeters. So 420 centimeters is equal to 4.2 meters, and 23 centimeters is equal to 0.23 meters. So if I want to find my volume in units of meters cubed, I need to multiply these three values by each other. So that would be 1.1 meters times 4.2 meters times 0.23 meters. The answer that I get in units of meters cubed would be 1.0626 meters cubed. Now, what if I had worded this exact same problem a little bit differently? What if, instead of giving you the dimensions for the box, I gave you the volume of the box 
in units of centimeters cubed, and I wanted you to convert it into meters cubed. Let's think about what that problem would look like. Convert 1,062,600 centimeters cubed into units of meters cubed. So this is the same as the last problem, but usually when I word it like this, I see a lot more students getting the incorrect answer. So the problem comes down to these units, centimeters cubed. You could also word that as centimeters to the third power. What this is, is centimeters multiplied by itself the number of times specified in the exponent. In other words, centimeters cubed is equal to centimeters times centimeters times centimeters. Let's think of what fraction we can come up with based on 100 centimeters equals one meter to convert from just centimeters to meters. So if I had some value, x number of centimeters, and I wanted to convert it into meters, I need to set up my fraction in such a way that centimeters cancels out. So centimeters is in a numerator here. I would want it in the denominator of my fraction. So 100 centimeters is in the denominator. One meter is in the numerator. So this is still the fraction that I want to use. I'm just going to need to use it three times. Now let's set up our conversion equation. So I'm going to start by writing our original quantity 1,062,600, but instead of writing centimeters cubed, I'm going to write it as centimeters times centimeters times centimeters. Now let's multiply by our fraction. So I decided that we need to multiply by one meter divided by 100 centimeters. That's great, but it only gets one of our centimeters to cancel out. Let's write just the units so far. Centimeters times centimeters times centimeters times meters divided by centimeters. I only have one centimeter in the denominator. I can only cancel one out of the numerator. So we need to apply this fraction two more times so that we can cancel all of the centimeters out. So I am once again using the same fraction times one meter over 100 centimeters and again times one meter over 100 centimeters. So looking at the units, adding on to this, I have multiplied by meters over centimeters two more times. So I can cancel centimeter from the numerator with a centimeter in the denominator, another centimeter in the numerator with a centimeter in the denominator. So here I have meters times meters times meters. This is what gives me meters to the third power. And this equation should give you the same answer as when we worked it out using the previous method. This would be equal to 1.0626 meters cubed. So we should get the same answer whether we convert each individual centimeter into meter, multiply length times width times height, or if we just start off with the volume. The key here is we wanted all three of the centimeters to cancel out. So one very common mistake that I see is that students will just stop here, stop after applying the unit conversion factor once. If we want all three centimeters to cancel out, I need to convert it three times.